When you practice meditation, what you're doing is you're practicing purifying your mind. You're purifying your mind from states that generally cause suffering to arise and pain. And the Buddha recommended very strongly that there are some uh, precepts that if you follow these precepts without breaking them, then your meditation will get very good very quickly. Now these precepts are recommendations, they're not commandments. You can take them or leave them, do whatever you want with them. But if you're interested in having your meditation improve, so that you can sit for periods of time without having a lot of distractions. Then, it would be best for you to keep these precepts as closely as you can. Now, there's five of them. You have five, I have 227. <laughs> the first one is not to kill or harm living beings on purpose. Why would you have a precept like this? Because if you kill or harm living beings on purpose, you have a mind that has hatred in it. And if you do that fairly often, naturally some of the things that arise is fear, and anxiety. And it can be real hindrances if you're trying to calm your mind down. This includes cockroaches, mosquitoes, um, chiggers. But you can make these animals leave you alone without killing them. There are certain botanical insect repellents that if you put on, you go out, the chiggers will not bother you. If you take um, cucumber, if you have cockroaches in your house and you don't want them there, take a cucumber and chop it up into fine little squares, put it in a dish, put it where they the uh, cockroaches come out. They don't like the smell. They will leave. I lived in San Francisco for a long period of time. Every restaurant, from five star on down to one star, they all had cockroaches. And whenever the inspector would come, the night before they knew the inspector was coming, they put out the cucumbers and they just left. They'll do it for a period of time, but you have to keep doing it to make them go away all the way. Another thing that works very well is if you have trouble with ants, cayenne pepper. You can put it on a line of ants and all of a sudden that line will just stop and they'll leave. They don't want anything to do with it. You can put it in front of the line and they'll come right up to it and say, no, let's go the other way. So there's a lot of things that you can do to prevent animals from harming you or causing problems without killing them. Now, when I was in Asia, they got lots and lots and lots of mosquitoes. So what did I do when it got to be mosquito time? Because they come in the morning, they come in the evening. It's very simple. I covered up. <laughs> and I only had to do that for about an hour or so, and they left me alone. I didn't get mosquito bites. 
Or if I had a mosquito bite, I saw a mosquito land, I would blow it away. Leave me alone. I found out something interesting, and that is if you eat raw garlic, a lot of insects will leave you alone. Of course, everybody else will too. <laughs> but as a monk, that, that was okay for me. <laughs> But when you when you intentionally kill another human, another being, <clears throat> there has to be dislike in your mind, or else you wouldn't kill it. And that is a thing that will it leaves the door open for <coughs> fear and anxiety to arise. And it can be quite overpowering at times. Fear is really able to freeze you. So if you don't want that kind of problem when you're sitting in meditation, having these kind of things come up, then it's recommended. And it's like I said, it's not a, a commandment that you have to do it. But understand that if you kill beings, your meditation is not going to be as calm and peaceful as if you didn't. Now the next precept just about everybody agrees on, don't take anything that is not given. In other words, don't steal anything from anybody. Now a lot of times people will um, they'll work in offices and this sort of thing and they wind up taking pins and that's stealing. Now what's the disadvantage of stealing? Your prosperity disappears very quickly and it causes a guilty mind. It causes anxiety, it causes remorse. I knew a guy one time that he was in, uh, he'd been in prison for about seven years because he went to, I think it was an Elks Lodge or something like this, right after they had a big fundraising thing. And he broke into the, the safe and he took $25,000. And he said he really had a rush when he saw all that money after he had to literally tear the safe apart to get it open. And I said, uh, okay, you had all that money, what'd you do with it? Oh, it just disappeared. It lasted about a week and it was gone. That's what happens when you take things that aren't given. Your prosperity disappears. So, that you have remorse arise, you know that you shouldn't do these kind of things. And if you try to justify it in your mind, it doesn't matter, it's only this little thing. It will come back. It will come back at you. And it always comes back in the form of restlessness and anxiety. Now, what is restlessness? We'll get into that in just a minute. But generally speaking, it's a mind that is really, really active and thinking all the time. And that translates into when a person is very restless, they have trouble sitting still. They're always wiggling. It's real funny when you, if you can get up high above a crowd and look down at people when they're sitting, how much they're continually moving their body. And the reason they're continually moving their body is because 
pain starts to come up and they want relief so they'll shift. Somebody that practices meditation, they get to sit through that. You remember the instructions. <laughs> and when they sit, they sit. You don't need to move around. I've, I've been in uh, different stores and something will catch my attention and I'll stand there and I'll look at it for a little while. And people, have they've come up not paying attention that I was standing there and just because they got close, I, that doesn't matter, I'm paying attention to this. And they'd turn around and then I'd start to move somewhere and they'd go, oh, I thought you were a mannequin. <laughs> because I wasn't moving. And this happened more than once. So one of the benefits of the meditation is starting to let go of the restlessness. And again, we'll talk about that in a minute. The next precept is not to have any wrong sexual activity. What's wrong sexual activity? Sexual activity with another person's mate. Sexual activity with someone that's too young. They're still under the care of their parents or guardians, whatever. Sexual activity with prostitutes. What it basically comes down to is not having any sexual activity that causes anyone pain or upset. That means yourself, that means the other person, that means the relatives of the other person. Why? because it causes a lot of other breaking of the precepts, which we'll get into in just a minute. The next precept is not to tell any lies. Say the truth. Now there's four different parts of this particular precept. You say what's truthful, and you don't slander. Now, what is slander? Slander is I go to this side of the room and I say something about people over there. And it gets you upset. And then I go over there and I tell you about these people over here. And it gets you upset. And it divides people. Okay? That's slander. Don't do that use words that bring people together, not tear them apart. That's part of the precept. Another part of the precept is don't curse. Don't use harsh speech. And the last part is don't gossip. Now, what is gossip? It's making up stories. It doesn't mean I can't talk about you to him, to her. But what I say about you needs to be honest. Not a made-up story to make you think something in a particular way. That's what gossip actually is. So, be careful with your speech. Say things that unite people that are easy for everyone to listen to. Uh, it was a major shock when I came back from 12 years in Asia to hear people on the, te on the television and on the radio cursing. 
It was a major shock. I wasn't, it wasn't like that when I left. But now they're using all kinds of foul language. And the F word seems to be uh, very common, especially for the younger people. No, don't do that. It's not nice to hear. It upsets other people. And it causes your mind to be tense and tight because when you're using curse words, you have dissatisfaction and dislike in your mind. And the meditation is about loving acceptance, not closing down around. The last precept is not to take any drugs or alcohol for recreational purposes. Well, if I have a beer every now and then, it doesn't really, it's not so bad. Well, it affects your thinking. And you will have a tendency to break the other precepts if you take drugs and alcohol. And I'm talking about recreational, not medicinal, although I don't really like Western medicine very much because it does have a tendency always to dull your mind in one way or another. When I was in Burma, I started catching a cold. I felt my throat starting to get sore. So I went to the doctor. There's a doctor at every meditation center. And I said, do you have anything for a cold? And he said, well, gargle with salt water and take an aspirin. So he gave me an aspirin. One aspirin. One pill. And I started thinking about how I didn't really want to take it, but okay, I'll take it anyway. So I cut it in half, and I just took half an aspirin. I took it in the morning. It affected my whole meditation in a negative way for the whole day. My mind was flighty. I was used to having great concentration, but when I took the aspirin, even a half an aspirin, it affected my mind so that my concentration wasn't as good. So, what do I do now when I have a cold coming on? I gargle with water, with uh, salt water, and I put some hydrogen peroxide in it. And then I lay down and I take vitamin C. And when I lay down, I rest. That means I don't listen to the radio, I don't have the TV on, I don't read a book. I rest. And sometimes the cold will last a whole six or seven hours. But when you try to push your way through a cold, you got it for two weeks. So it's your choice. What are you going to do? Oh, I have to do this. Well, there's nothing that important, to my way of thinking anyway. And this, this was proven to me over and over again because I was staying in Burma. I was staying in a, it was a dormitory style situation where there was a lot of other people and one person catches a cold, everybody gets a cold. And I felt the cold coming on. I just said, no, I'm not going to meditate today. I'm just going to rest. And I took vitamin C and I gargled. And in the evening I was feeling great. So I got up and I was started meditating and everybody else, they looked like they got hit with something, you know. They, they, they looked terrible. And everybody got the sniffles, and they, they were coughing, and they were moaning and groaning, but they kept trying to meditate. 
and their nose was running, so they'd take a Kleenex and they'd stuff it up their nostrils so that they could sit. So it's it's a matter of if you have to take drugs for medicinal purposes, watch how it affects your mind and your body and see what the most natural way is to overcome that problem. Now, I just sent an article to Otha today on the health effects of having a good belly laugh. It's amazing the things that it does for you. <coughs> Now, when I'm, when I'm teaching you meditation, I tell you, I want you to smile. And I really want you to smile. And this is not just while you're sitting, okay? This is an all-the-time practice. The sitting meditation is for your quiet time, so you can really see things more clearly. But the rest of the time, need to be smiling and every time you see yourself getting serious about anything you need to laugh 